Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وعلى تابعيهم ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد رب يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدني علما والهقني بالصالحين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم سبحانك لا فهم لنا إلا ما فهمتنا إنك أنت الجواد الكريم My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the glorious Qur'an وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ And the days are such that we exchange them. They move from one side to the other between people. There will constantly be a shift of ideology and power, ways and trends. The question that I pose, how often would this shift occur and for how long will it occur? How often and for how long? And what is the pivoting point? For that, I present to you today this discussion. Earlier this week, I read on Facebook someone had posted, and in my assumption, it was a very derogatory manner of speaking that this coming Friday, the Imams and Khatibs better not put us down. For we are in the week of MLK Day and the inauguration of the 45th President. They better talk about what's current and what's important. Great. It led me to ask this question. What has happened to us? that all we're known for is how we respond. For too long now, we've been caught up in this knee-jerk reaction. And it has prolonged to the extent that we ourselves don't know what we stand for. In Arabic, there is a couplet. فَسَوْفَ تَرَى إِذَا انْكَشَفَ الْغُبَارُ أَفَرَسٌ تَحْتَ رِجْلِكَ أَمْ حِمَارُ So you're going along and you're calling to war as a great warrior. And you're in the thick of the storm right now. And your claims and your words are such that you've forgotten what are you sitting on. You know, it's like sometimes you leave the house, you run to the car, but you forgot the keys. Or you leave your coffee on top of the car. 
It's not good. فَسَوْفَ تَرَى إِذَا انْكَشَفَ الْغُبَارُ This dust will settle. And you will very soon see, are you sitting on a horse or a donkey? Where are we? Where are we claiming to go and what are the means that we have acquired in order to get there? Today, all energy and time is being spent on the other rather than oneself. And the norm has become that we protest a crime when it's committed, a right when it's violated. We denounce injustice when perpetrated. We cry foul when a life is taken. We want to tell leaders how to lead and followers whom to follow. Think about it. We are still protesting an election that has passed and an inauguration that was just done an hour and a half ago. We vocalize only when all is said and done. So my question is, who are we? And what do we stand for? The trend has become to oppose the ways of others. So in essence, we are saying we are here to point things out. This is wrong, that is wrong, that's not correct. This person isn't standing for what's right. But then, what is different? What is better? What is the alternative to it? That no one is speaking. We need to go back and ask ourselves a very simple question. What is my message as a person? For we were to actively speak as the other side spoke, to challenge as it made its move, to unravel as it complicated things. We were to play on an active field, and the medal would always go to the one whose message remained consistent. Where are those Abdul Muttalibs? The one whose story was known before the birth of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His cry was, I want my camels. In the face of the approaching army, he did not lose focus for his right. لِلْبَيْتِ رَبٌّ يَحْمِي the house has a God. The God will protect it. I want my camels. The world's going to play out the way it's going to play out. The question is, what are you going to deliver to the table that could counter what's being played out? Because for too long, negating it, condemning it, refuting it, putting it down, isn't taking anyone anywhere. Take, for example, a great man whose day we celebrated just past Monday, Dr. Martin Luther King. See, Dr. King spent his, in he didn't spend his entire life crying foul to the torture and the lynching, the bullying and the raping, the enslavement, enslavement and segregation. He saw it. He knew it. And boy, did he knew, know it very well. Rather, he committed himself to what he believed was better and the true game changer. He invested his entire life and energy towards it. He built his mission. He built his message and that became his life mission. He started walking as a person holding a candle in the midst of layers of darkness. But he continued to walk the walk as he talked the talk. His message was of unity, inclusion, justice, peace. And this message began to reverberate and people began to hear him. Not just those who agreed with him, but especially those who opposed him. It built momentum all the while that the other side tried to normalize their practices. They wanted to make racism justified. They wanted to make lynching of the African community justified. They wanted to show people of color as the other. 
But he saw you can't just speak out against it. You have to speak for something much greater than it. Finally, his message resonated to the extent that it began to click. It drew attention. And its continuity allowed sanity to speak to the face of tyranny. And finally, he won. He was the other, he was persistent, and hence he became the game changer. My dear brothers and sisters, let it be known loud and clear that we are now entering into the chapter of Musa alayhi salam. A story which takes a great chunk of the Holy Quran scattered throughout. If you look into it, 28 of the 30 juz of the Quran speak about Musa alayhi salam. And that story is there for a reason. And I feel it couldn't resonate any more than it does to us at this moment here today. Today we'll learn how important it is in life to, going, to go from being unmindful, reactive, towards proactive and preventive. One day, someone came to the Pharaoh and told him that a child will be born in your kingdom and he'll be the means of stripping your kingdom from under your feet. Any sane-minded person will say that this is the threat. Now what are you going to do to counter the threat? He commanded in his kingdom that every boy that is born is slaughtered. Every second year, every boy that's born be slaughtered and killed. Because what, at, what is at stake is my kingdomship and I cannot lose that. But the mother of Musa السلام, had him in the year that boys were being slaughtered. Knowing what could happen, the Quran uses amazing language to describe to us this incident. Revelation is only what Allah gives to prophets alayhimu salatu wassalam. But here Allah is using the word of revelation that we reveal to the mother of Musa alayhi salam. That in the face of open tyranny and boys being killed, you are pregnant with a boy and you will give birth to a boy at a time when he should be killed. Let it not stop you from doing what you're doing. Not only is Allah telling her that she will have the baby, but Allah is telling her to tend to the basic needs of the baby. And do not become distracted. When that time reaches a pinnacle that you're really fearing, put him into the water. Send him off in the river. And do not fear and do not grieve. Because when you stay consistent with who you are and what you believe and profess, Allah is going to make things turn around. But you have to stay stable. And Allah is giving her a promise. I'm going to return him to you. And not only am I going to return him, he's going to be a prophet. Subhanallah. So in this state of unmindfulness of Musa he was a baby. Allah is teaching us to live on. And remember, before even Musa alayhi birth, Fir'aun was already known for what he was known. And what was that? Inna Fir'aun ala fil ard. He was ruling on this earth. How was he ruling? Waja'ala ahlaha shia'a. He made people into sects and divisions. He put down a segment of society. He killed some of their children. He left their women alive. 
He was truly an evil person. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that this boy being born is going to arrive at his doorstep. Because when you're on the truth, you don't turn and hide or run. You don't hide, you don't run. You rather confront the problem. So the problem has now come home. This boy needs nourishment. He needs to live. And they themselves want him to live. As the wife of Fir'aun says, he's the coolness of my eyes and your eyes. You know we can have a child and this child looks like this is ours. But what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الْمَرَاضِعَ مِنْ قَبْلِ Every lady that tried to nurse this baby was unsuccessful. Because Allah had promised, it's coming back to the mother. Now Musa Aysam has grown up. He's a grown man, he's young, he's energetic, but he's reactive. So we're moving on from being unmindful of what's happening around you to becoming reactive. And that's where a bulk of the Muslim community today is. There was an instant where Musa Isam entered the town and he saw two people quarreling. One was his people and one was from another tribe. And the one from his tribe asked, I need your help, Musa. So Musa Isam jumped in. He knocked him down. But not only did he knock him down, he knocked him out. He killed him. So now Musa Alayhisam has killed this person without the intent. He's remorseful. Now he's fearful. He's looking around in town. How could I hide? I'm scared. The next day Musa Alayhisam goes back. And he sees the same person quarreling again but with a different person. And Musa is like, oh my God, what did I do? I tried to help you, and the person that you were quarreling wasn't the problem, the problem was you. And when he saw Musa Isam's demeanor change, he goes, أَتُرِيدُ أَن تَقْتُلَنِي كَمَا قَتَلْتَ نَفْسًا بِالْأَمْسِ You want to kill me now, just like you killed the guy yesterday? Sometimes we're in a zone that we don't realize where reality is. And it's so shallow. So Musa alayhi salam now is exposed for being the murderer of the person yesterday and now they're coming after him. What does Musa alayhi salam do? He was told, get out of here before they capture you. So he ran. He was desperate for assistance. He sought Allah in solitude with an empty heart. He found two girls waiting in line for water. We know the story. And he helped them. And then he said, Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer. This is a turning point, my dear friends. Oh Allah, whatever you're sending down, I am in true need of it. And what did Allah do from here? This is the phase we want to go into. He was reactive. Now Allah's making him proactive. Not only did he then get married and serve, his father-in-law. He received Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is said that when him and his family left out to go and find a new place to live, in the middle of the desert, in the darkness of night, they were lost. Sometimes we will be lost in our life and that's okay. But remember, you will not find your destination if you choose to go back. Musa Aysam didn't say, let's go back to your father's house and let's figure it out tomorrow. No, I see a fire in front of me. It gives me hope, a glimmer of hope. I'm going towards it. And I'm going to find out which way we should go. And he found Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lo and behold, Allah gave him two miracles and made him a prophet. At that moment, Musa salam, was a game player, was a team player. He wasn't someone who wanted it all for himself. It is stated that Musa salam, asked for his brother the best thing anyone could ask for their brother. 
And what did he say? Oh Allah, make my brother my companion, my assistant. So Allah made him also a prophet, subhanAllah. Another example that when we need to accomplish something, we will not be able to do it alone. If a prophet needed help, we truly need help today. So we heard about wrong and we didn't listen. And when we listened, we reacted. When we reacted, we got scared. And when we got scared, we were on the brink of giving up. Musa is teaching us now to lace up, get up, and move forward. Because what we're standing for today, my dear Muslims in America, is bigger than ourselves. It's bigger than our families. It's bigger than our communities. It's bigger than our masjids and institutions. It is about upholding true justice and peace and morality and civility for entire humanity. That's what you're standing up for. And that is what is called Islam, even though if people may not agree with it. Now Musa a.s. is being instructed by Allah. If you want to now move forward to the top of the ladder, it's not being proactive, it's being preventive. That because of you, things will stop and never happen again. That through your effort, racism will not just cease, but racism will be no more. Prejudice will not cease, but prejudice will be no more. Our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to the top of his lungs, until the final ceremony in Hajjat al-Wada made it clear that racism and tribalism has nothing to do with Islam. Why? Because he wanted to drill home the message that there comes a time where we have to stop things in order for our message to take, fo- take forward and for it to resonate. Allah is saying to him, that king who's out for your life, for the murder that you committed, you're going to that king. إِذْهَبَا إِلَىٰ فِرْعَوْنَ إِنَّهُ طَغَىٰ فَقُولَا لَهُ قَوْلَ اللَّيِّنَىٰ Not only did Allah command him and his brother to go to the Pharaoh, but he told them, he instructed them, he commanded them, speak to them in a kind fashion. We can't change America by splitting it into two categories. Those with a party or a people and those against. The message begins with those people. So go to him and speak to him nicely. Yes, you're a prophet. Yes, you are chosen by me. And yes, he's a tyrant. And yes, he claims divinity. He claims that he's divine. He claims he's God. As he stated, I'm your greatest God. Allah saying, go speak to him kindly. So Musa went and spoke to him. He challenged the status quo by showing what's better. When the magicians lined up to take him down, his one staff took away all those ropes. And even those magicians saw the truth in what he brought. Remember, when right comes forth, wrong will always crumble. But the thing is that that right is failing. Right isn't even being presented today in our world. And when you're right, I promise you, the Quran promises you, that even the enemy will reach out to you. فَلَمَّا وَقَعَ عَلَيْهِمُ الرِّجْسُ قَالُوا يَا مُوسَى دْعُ لَنَا رَبَّكَ بِمَا أَحِدَ عِنْدَكَ لَإِنْ كَشَفْتَ عَنَّا الرِّجْزَ لُنُؤْمِنَنَّ لَكَ وَلُنُرْسِلَنَّ مَعَكَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ When Musa Isam remained consistent on his message, for the safety and security of the people of Israel to ensure that they weren't treated in such an inhumane fashion through the message and direction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He won a spot and a place in the heart of Pharaoh's kingdom. That Pharaoh would reach out to him, O Musa, call your Lord and tell him to remove these predicaments from us. They were afflicted with floods 
with locusts, with lice, with frogs, with blood. These were times that they faced that the Pharaoh couldn't solve. And he said, call your Lord because I know your Lord is there. And when he continued, but tyranny never stopped, now Allah will make the pivoting point. Remember what I said in the beginning. It's going to change. It changes when your message reads, reaches the core and those people aren't ready to give up. Allah will change it. We opened up the water. We took them inside and we took them down. But before he went down, before the Pharaoh and his army went down, every book of every Abrahamic faith will tell you. His wife already embraced the message of Musa alayhi salam. That the Quran says, we give you example of the wife of the Pharaoh. Asiya. May Allah be pleased with her. May Allah be pleased with her. And the Pharaoh himself said, I bring faith on the Lord of Moses and Aaron. But Allah said, now it's too late. So the impact of good occurred, but it happened with great struggles. And remember, my dear friends, we have to endure struggles. Nothing ever came easy and nothing ever stayed with ease. Musa Alisam had hurdles within his own neck of the woods. His own people started worshipping a cow when he went to get the book. He gave them food from heaven, they wanted food from earth. He opened the river, but they still complained. They would say things like, ya Musa, ja'allana ilahan kama lahum aliha. Musa, give us a God. They have a God, we want a God too. This was the problems he faced internally, but it didn't stop him. But you know why? Because he said, Inna ma'ya Rabbi, my Allah is with me. May Allah be with us all. His voice of justice to the face of tyranny. He was the creator's response to creation's claim of divinity. And he was stability in the face of insanity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us all for good. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to understand the mission that we have ahead of us. And allow us to focus upon that mission. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد عبده ورسوله. So my dear brothers and sisters, I have just taken us all on this journey from being reactive to proactive to preventive. A Muslim's job is to ensure that such matters never occur on this earth again. And this is a ladder we all have to climb independently, but as a unit. And if we fail to do this, I end with this, the only thing in store tomorrow is remorse and regret. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear in the Quran that those who fail to climb the ladder, who fail to bring goodness to the table, who fail to fulfill the trust entrusted to them, they will say, Ya laytani kuntu turaba. Tomorrow, when they'll be brought to life, they'll say, I wish I was dirt. Why? Ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati. Because there's nothing I sent forth. Because what you do on this earth for goodness is what you're sending forth tomorrow to Allah for your goodness. That fear will be to the extent, Ya laytani lam uta kitabia, that you will not want to stand in front of Allah and get your book of deeds. Why? Ya laytani lam attakhid fulan and khalila. I was mixing with the wrong crowd. People were making me indulge in fear and in hate when I was supposed to leave toward, lead people towards goodness and unity. Ya laytani attakhadtu ma'ar rasuli sabila. My dear friends, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, on that day people will wish that they took Rasulullah's path to, to, to effort. And they made the path of Rasulullah their path. There are always people doing goodness. It is time we align ourselves with those who are doing goodness. If not, will be the claim of those people and groups. We wish we followed Allah and we followed His Rasul. 
my dear brothers and sisters, how long are we going to continue to cry? Let us now create a world of goodness. Let us recreate those values that were instilled on this earth by our Habib Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Let us become those true advocates of goodness and humanity and civility. We send blessings upon Habib Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wasallam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself states in the Holy Quran, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina abanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taseema. Allahumma fasalli wa sallim wa barik ala seyyidina Muhammad. Abdika wa rasulika nabi al-ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barak wa sallam taseeman kathiran kathira. Allahumma ya rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunna min al-khasirin. Rabbi ghfir wa rahamma tajawaz amma ta'lam innaka anta al-ala عزل أكرم اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا وأصلح ذات بيننا واهدنا سبل السلام وجنبنا الفواحش ما ظهر منها وما بطن اللهم اشف مرضانا وعاف مبتلانا وارحم موتانا يا رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين إن الله أمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون السلام عليكم brothers and sisters a few quick announcements it's been about a week since we opened up the health clinic the free health clinic and alhamdulillah uh, it has been very successful this one week alone uh, we got mashallah very good positive media coverage right here in Orlando and nationwide and through social media we've had responses from as far away as England, the, uh, the Middle East and also from the Indian subcontinent. Uh, we've got an incredible amount of email to the AMCC email, uh, positive responses and if you look at the responses of the Orlando Central itself, yesterday they put AMCC as champions. Uh, every week they have a champion and they put AMCC as champions yesterday for opening up a free medical clinic to serve the larger community. On another note, within the first weekend after we uh, opened up the appointments for our free clinic, uh, we've had 70 reservations as of this morning and we're booked up till February the 24th. At the present time, we're only doing Fridays. Inshallah, in a few weeks, we'll add Tuesdays to it and hopefully in about a month or six weeks as we get more doctors uh, making commitments to come. We'll inshallah even do Saturdays and hopefully keep growing this thing. It's been an amazing dawah tool. I think it's a home run for AMCC to open up this free clinic because we've got incredible amount of positive coverage from the larger community that, they, that Muslims are benefiting America. And also this week uh, in, uh, on radio, uh, we had public service announcements. Some of you may have heard it. If you want to hear it, it's on our website and also on our emails that we send out on Thursday nights. And we have a billboard campaign. We have three billboards on I-4 and two billboards on I-95, uh, making uh, America great through love, compassion, and mercy. Uh, our elections is coming up. Uh, this weekend, uh, Sunday, is the last day if you want to nominate someone. We need the forms by Sunday night. We already have three candidates. There's only two openings. So we're looking for more candidates who would like to uh, run for a board position of AMCC. Uh, this weekend is a very busy weekend. Imam Azhar Subedar is visiting us from Tampa. Inshallah, tonight uh, there is a program between Muslim and Christian about increasing understanding. We have 55 Christians already RSVP'd for the program, and we need a good showing of the Muslims. This is a good time for us to make hay while the sun is shining. There's a new president taking place today in America, and we don't know what the future holds. We need to build relationship with the larger community, and we at AMCC are doing our part. I would like you to join us. Uh, Azra Griffith is the Christian leader who will be speaking, and Imam Azhar Subedar also. Our cafe will be open. Inshallah, 7.15 is Isha. So come join us after Isha will do the program, and if you're hungry, the cafe will be open. Tomorrow morning after Fajr, Fajr is at 6.30, it's a Saturday, please come pray Fajr with us. And Imam Azhar Subedar will talk about community relations. And we will serve you breakfast, so we will not send you back home hungry. Tomorrow at 10.30 is the youth town hall. You know, Imam Azhar Subedar will be talking to our youth. And it'll be till 1 o'clock, we'll serve them lunch and then you can pick them up and take them home. And then tomorrow night, this is really important, uh, we are trying to do 
we are doing so many programs at AMCC, but we are noticing that the community participation is getting lower. As we do more programs, the turnout is only 20, 30, 40 people. Our Imam Mufti Mahad does three programs every, every week, and the turnout is very, very weak, about 20 to 30, sometimes 40 people at most. We want all of you to participate. We are doing programs for you to participate. So Imam Azal Subedar, tomorrow night, we will feed you dinner. After Isha, he will talk about the importance of participating in the community. That this is not a, just a masjid for us to come pray for, uh, for us to come pray Juma. It is for the whole week. And Imam Mufti Mahad is doing a great job and doing a lot of programs, but the participation is low. So Imam Azhar Subedar is going to talk to us about the importance of uh, participation. And tomorrow uh, night also, uh, Imam Mahad is going to do a spiritual and physical fitness for our youth. So when the Imam Azhar Subedar is doing the participation program, uh, Mufti Mahad will be doing a workout, physical and spiritual workout for our young people. So please make sure to bring your youth with you. And next Friday is the after Isha is the girls youth program. Sister Ariba is doing that one. This is uh, the missus of our Imam. Uh, Sister Ariba and Friday February the 3rd after Isha will be the AMCC general body meeting and just to make it easy We're also going to do candidate night that night You will be have an opportunity to speak to the future candidates who are running for the board position So we will do it Friday February the 3rd and the final announcement is this weekend January 22nd There's a ICNA fundraiser. They have great uh, speakers who are coming, the uh, flyers are outside if you'd like to join them. Jazakallah khair. I hope to see all of you tonight. Assalamu alaikum. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala al falah. Qad qamat al salah, qad qamat al salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وإن تبدوا ما في أنفسكم أو تخفوه يحاسبكم يحاسبكم به الله فيغفر لمن يشاء ويعذب من يشاء والله على كل شيء قدير آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير الله أكبر سميع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله 
أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا ضالين لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده ربنا ولك الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Assalamu alaikum everybody. Inshallah, for tonight, I just want to reiterate what Brother Atif said. It's not a comparative religion uh, program tonight. It's not about judging whose religion is better or not. It's about coming together as people of different religions and showing that level of maturity so that we could work together for the betterment of our society, inshallah. So inshallah, please request everyone, please come along with your families. There are postcards outside. Give it to your neighbors and tell them, you know what? We're having a Christian Muslim dialogue tonight at the masjid and welcome them and also ask them to participate with us, inshallah. Jazakum Allah khairan. Oh, no. 